Hi, this is Ginger from my sister Scrapper. Welcome to another Thursday tutorial. Today's tutorial is uh, for anyone out there who is a new scrapbooker or even an old scrapbooker that wants to just maybe pick up a few tips. But I've had several requests from a lot of people about how to create the covers and the bindings um, for mini album. And I've shared with you several different page ideas. So what I decided is I'm going to go ahead and show you how I create my binding and how I determine how to make the covers and put it together. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to actually learn how to make the hinge system and then how we go ahead and do the, um, the covers and how you determine the width of your spine. And this is just a, this is a project I'm working on right now. So a little sneak peek there for you, a little Christmas countdown mini album. So what you want to need is some medium weight chipboard. You're going to need some uh, cardstock that you can use to make your hinge and that you can wrap your card your uh, chipboard with. I've had several people ask about my chipboard. Where do I get my chipboard? I buy my chipboard online at Amazon.com. I purchased the 12 by 12 sheets from Graphics, and it comes in a pack of 25 sheets, and it's pretty inexpensive. It's like 10, 11, 12 dollars, something like that. And, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we do that and I'm going to use for an example just a small size of mini album like the one I showed you, the cover I showed you. However, what you want to do first is we're going to make the hinge. So to determine the size of your hinge, that depends on the size of your page. For example, a few weeks ago I did a tutorial on how to create this mini album. So to make my hinges, I would measure the height of my page, and this page is six and a half. I like to make mine at least an eighth of an inch shorter. So I would make the height of my hinges six and three eighths. So we're going to say, for example, that my pages are four and a half. I'm going to make my hinges four and three eighths. Okay? So, and I like to use eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Um, you can use 12 by 12, but I buy 8.5 by 11 all the time because it's the most on sale. <laughs> so I'm going to show you um, on some craft paper here. You're going to need your scoreboard, you're going to need a bone folder, and you're going to need some score tape. And we'll go ahead and get started. So go ahead and cut your cardstock to make your hinge uh, for whatever the height of your page is. And then uh, if you use 8.5 by 11, it'll be by 11. You can use 12 by 12, um, but your measurements might be just a little bit different. So I'm going to show you if your pages is eight and a half by eleven inches long. So the height and eight and eleven inches. So you're going to put it in your scoreboard here, and the first score mark we're going to do. And I usually make six pages. You can make whatever amount of pages you want. I still would use eight and a half by eleven, and then just trim off any extra here that you don't need. But here is the sequence. Um, I like to start at one and three quarters of an inch for my first score mark. Then this section here, this one and three quarters of an inch, is what we're going to attach to our book. Now we're the next couple of the next score lines are going to be making our hinges. So our first score mark again is one and three quarters. We're going to move over half an inch, which would make it two and a quarter, and then another half an inch would make it two and three quarters. Okay. So those two half inch pieces, we're going to fold those together and that's going to make our hinge. Like it's going to create this little piece right here. Okay. Then we need to determine how much space we want in between our pages and that will be our next set of score marks. I usually, I've found out a quarter of an inch is great, but I can never do a quarter of an inch anymore. Um, I always use three eighths of an inch. And the reason why I do then I, that always makes my standard spine the same size and I don't have to really think about it. And by the time you put embellishments or photos and everything in there. You don't want your book to like gap open like this, which I did on a couple of mine. So I just do three eighths of an inch. You don't have to, you can do whatever you want. My niece, she likes chunky. She makes a half an inch between hers. <laughs> so I'm going to do three eighths of an inch. And if you use um, the Martha Stewart scoreboard, the little blue tick marks are the one eighth of an inch. So we've got our one and three quarters, our two and a half, and our two and three quarters. Now I'm going to make the space between my pages and I'm going to make that three eighths of an inch. So I just count over three tick marks, one, two, three, which would be three and one eighth. Okay, this space right here now is going to be my space between my page. Now I need to create another hinge. So your sequence is half, half, 
3 eighths. So again, we're going to do a half, which is going to be right here. And you can just count over four spots, which is what I do. That's four eighths is a half an inch. So at four and one eighth, we're now made our second hinge. Again, we're going to count over three eighths of an inch because we want to make our space. And that's our second space. Again, we're going to go a half an inch and another half an inch. So we got five here and five and a half, and that's our next hinge, one, two, three, and then another half an inch. So again, we've got a half, a half, three eighths, a half, a half, three eighths, a half, a half, three eighths, a half, a half, and three eighths. We're now up to seven and a quarter. And a half, Three eighths, half, and a half. Hopefully, I didn't do seven. I might have. <laughs> Four, five, six. There we go. Okay, so that ended up with about one and three eighths of an inch over here, and I have one and three quarters, and I'm okay with that. If that's going to drive you crazy, then trim this off so it's the same amount of here, amount of space that you have over here. So we're done scoring. That's it. Again, the sequence, we start at one and three quarters and we go a half, a half. So we've got one and three quarters of our first score mark. That doesn't count as our half. Then we go a half an inch from there and a half an inch in, from there. Then we go three eighths, half, half, three eighths, half, half, three eighths, half, half, three eighths, half, half, three eighths, half. half Okay, we're done scoring. This is going to be our binding for our pages. So we're done with our scoreboard. And you want to go ahead and get your chipboard cut. And again, I use medium weight chipboard. I buy it online at Amazon.com. It's from Graphics. And um, people ask me also how I cut my chipboard. You can use a craft knife and a mat. I'm basically, I do have a guillotine cutter to use, but it's up on a top shelf and I'm too lazy to get it out. So I just use my regular Fiskars trimmer. I do have a separate blade that I take out. It's not special, it's just one that I always use for chipboard. Um, and I just go ahead and cut through it like this three or four times. I take my chipboard out, turn it over, and then cut it on the back side. Okay, so you can still, you can do it that way. You don't need a special cutter. Or you can, again, use your craft knife and a ruler. So I've cut my chipboard, and the way I determine my chipboard is I like to make my chipboard at least a quarter of an inch larger than my pages. So if my pages are four and a quarter, I would make my chipboard pieces four and a half high, and then if my pages are three and a quarter wide, I would make it three and a half wide. And the way you determine the width of your spine is based upon the width of your binding. So we're going to go ahead and put our binding together. You're going to need your score tape, and hopefully you can see this. Okay, so take your, and I like to use quarter inch score tape. Even though these are a half an inch, I still use the quarter inch. You can use three eighths of an inch, but it's too hard for me to find, and I just buy this online. It's easier. So go ahead, and you're going to put score tape in that first half an inch channel. I like to put mine towards the bottom of my score line, but not going over. And then you're going to skip the next one, skip the next one, and then add another piece of score tape. So again, we're going to skip that channel, skip that channel, and then another piece. And this will all make sense once we start folding. Skip, skip, and another one. Hopefully my head's not in the way. Skip, skip, and another one here. And the last piece right here. Okay. Then I like the one thing about score tape, it's fabulous, but the key to score tape or any double-sided tape is you need to burnish it. Make sure it sticks, and number one, it makes the backing come off a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and skip that first fold score line, and we're going to fold that second score mark. Okay? Then we're going to take the backing off of our tape, and then go ahead and press it down. Okay. 
that's our first hinge. Now we want it to stand up, so I usually just stand it up on my table like this and fold it over, burnish it, and fold it back and forth this way. Okay, that's our first hinge right there. See how cool is that? So again, we're going to take the next one. We're not going to fold on this one. We're going to fold on that center one. And again, make sure you'll get it straight here. Open back up. Take the backing off your tape and press it down. And again, flip it over this way. Stand it up. It should stand right up on that fold that you made. And Another question I have, people ask is how do I get my pages to lay so flat? You need to really work your hinges. Meaning when I say that, go ahead and just burnish them several times back and forth with your bone folder to get them flexible, break up those fibers in. That way they'll turn easy. So, I'm going to go ahead and again fold on the center one there. Burnish it really well and then take the backing off your tape and press it down. So go ahead and continue to do that till you get to the very end. Okay, so we're all done, and again, you want to work your hinges back and forth like this. So there is our binding that we're going to use to slip our pages on to our hinges. So again, this would be larger for this particular page, but what you'll do is these are going to set right on here like this, and that's going to be your page. Okay. So what we want to do next is we want to go ahead and put score tape on our hinges on both sides like I've done in this one, on this side as well as on this side on all of your hinges. And then once you get that done you're going to go ahead and flip it over and we're going to put score tape on the back of our binding so we can attach it to our chipboard spine piece. Okay. So get your score tape out still. Um, what I like to do first is put my score tape on my actual spaces right here. We've got um, five spaces here, and that's the space. Be that's the gusset, the space between our pages, our hinges. So I'm going to go ahead, and I like to use a quarter inch because it fits in really well. The key to this is you don't want to put any adhesive on your score lines here, your fold. Otherwise, it makes your pages a little bit stiff. So that's why on a three-eighths of an inch gusset, the quarter inch tape works really well. Go ahead and do that. Okay. And again, make sure you burnish your tape. Then I like to put score tape around the perimeter of all of this. And for that, I usually use the half an inch just because I have half an inch in my, and it covers more space, more area. But it's not necessary. Any type of adhesive that you prefer is fine. Again, you want to put it as close to the edge so you make sure you get a good stick. And again, I like to put it on this side but not on top of my fold. And we'll put one over here. And we'll put one over here. And we'll just stick another one here in the middle because this side is a little bit longer. I could have trimmed this off to measure it, make it the same as this, but I'm okay with that. No one's going to see it. We're going to cover it up with paper anyway. Okay. So that is our hinge. How cool is that? Now, to determine the width of your spine, what I said is it depends on the space you have between your pages. I use 3 eighths of an inch. So what you want to do is you want to fold your your large flaps that you're going to use to attach and you just want to measure your space here between your 
pages. So this measures two inches. I like to make mine just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to make mine at two and a half. You can make it exactly two inches, and that, it'll work fine, but it needs to be, a, it can be larger, or but it can't be smaller. It has to be at least the size of your, your hinge system. So this one's two inches, so it needs to be at least two inches. Again, I like to allow for extra space, so I like to make mine two and a half when I do a three-eighths of an inch. Guess it. So that's what I've done. I've cut my spine, my um, spine piece to two and a half by the height of my page, and I've cut my covers. So you're going to lay it out. I like to lay it out like this. So we have my front cover, my spine, and my back cover. Another question people ask is my cardstock tears. If your cardstock tears, number there's several reasons why that can happen. Number one, you haven't left enough space between your chipboard. I use the same chipboard all the time so I pretty much know that's about right for me. Okay, at least two thicknesses of your chipboard. You can make yourself a little shim so you kind of know and be exact or once you've made as many mini elms as I have you just kind of can eyeball it. So that's how you want it to lay out. Another reason why your Paper can tear is if depends on the quality of the paper. Number one, some design or series papers will tear no matter what you do. Um, that's just and I that's through trial and error that I know that. That's why there's only certain papers that I like to use on my covers. Um, I found it best to go ahead and use a solid cardstock and then mat my with my design paper instead of using my design paper to cover my my chipboard. So that's what I'm going to do here. So what we need to do now is we need to measure this once we've got it laid out. I like to leave at least an inch on all sides. You can leave three quarters of an inch, but I wouldn't leave anything less than that. But that's just me because you want to make sure it will fold over and stay stuck down. So if we stick this on here, <clears throat> excuse me, this measure is about nine and three quarters. So we want to add an inch over here would be ten and three quarters and an inch over here would be eleven three quarters. So that's to me close enough to twelve inches. So twelve inches by my chipboard is four and a half. I want an inch here and an inch here. That would be an extra two inches, so that'd be six and a half. So six and a half by twelve is what I'm going to cut my paper that I'm going to wrap my chipboard. So I have it right here. And since I've allowed one inch all the way around, in order to make sure that I line my chipboard up, I like to go ahead and run a score line of one inch along the top and one inch along one side. So get your scoreboard back out. Put it in here like this first, and we're going to score it one inch, flip it around, and you can either score it at one inch here or one inch at this end. It doesn't really matter which one. This is just going to act as a guide to make sure we have a line to line up our chipboard. So there we go. So we have our chipboard scored, or our cardstock scored, and we've scored it an inch here and an inch along the top. But what you want to do, remember, when you fold, you always want to fold on that bump that you made. So we're gonna, I'm going to flip mine over here. Take your chipboard pieces, add your adhesive to the back. <clears throat> now, if when you put your covers together, for example, covers for this, it's going to be larger than 12 inches. I like to use two sheets of eight and a half by 11, cut it to the height that I need. For example, this is six and a half, so we'll say eight and a half is what I need, and this is already eight and a half by 11. So I would trim my paper to eight and a half by eight and a half, and then I would overlap it by a quarter of an inch, and that should give you enough space to wrap your chipboard, okay? But since I'm doing a small one, the 12 by 12 work good for this. Okay, score tape. Or you can use a wet glue. I just don't like bubbles. Um, there are some wet glues that don't bubble, but it's just easier for me to use tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and put score tape around my chipboard.
sure you burnish your tape. Then you can fill in here with your um, score tape or you can just use um, your ATG gun if you want, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, we're going to take the backing off of our tape. Okay, we're going to take our cover first, and we've got right here is our, we're going to put this along the top edge and this piece over here along this side. Don't go over your score line. Use that as a guide and line it right up, just like that, and press it down. Okay, the next one we're going to use is our spine piece. Again, we want to leave a little space. I'm just going to eyeball it, but make sure it's at least two thicknesses of your chipboard width. I'm going to put that right there like that. Press it down, and then we're going to add the last piece, the back. this score line as a guide. We're going to leave a space and we're going to stick her down. There we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and fold on that score line here that we created at the top and the one on this side. And then we need one over on this side and one along the bottom. So I just leave it on my table and take my bone folder and just make a score line here and make a score line all the way down here like this. And fold it over. Give it a good crease. Same with this side. There we go. Now we're going to wrap this over and we're going to stick it down. What I like to do with this is, again, I would use my score tape. You can use a wet glue if you want, um, but we're going to go ahead and miter our corners. But I like to put my tape on first before I do that. So we're going to do the long sides first. I'm going to put a piece here and a piece along the top of my chipboard. And I just go right into my space as well this and again we'll do the bottom right along the bottom edge of your chipboard just go right in that space as well and then along the bottom here now you can put another line of score tape in here if you want but I'm not gonna it's good I think and again on the small sides Okay, go ahead and burnish your tape. Okay, now the best way I found to do this is you can, um, we're going to cut these at an angle. So you're going to need some scissors. You can use a pencil and a ruler. You can eyeball it, but what you want to do, it it's easier to take off less because you can't add it back on. So if you need to trim it afterwards, then that's fine. But go ahead and what I like to do, the thickness of my chipboard is usually about an eighth of an inch. So that's what you want to leave off is an eighth of an inch. So put this at an angle here 
And again, you can use a pencil if you want. And just draw a little line all the way around. Again, use your ruler. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut those angles off. And this is why I put my tape on first because it's it's way easier to do it and just trim off that little bit of tape. It's not that much of a waste. Okay, so it should look like this when you get finished got those cut off. Now we're going to go ahead and take the backing off our tape and fold those over and stick it down. So I like to do the long sides first. So we're going to take the top off first and again we're going to go ahead and fold that over and press it down. We're going to do the bottom next. Take the backing off. So now we have this. Now we need to do something with these little corners here. What I like to do is take my um, bone folder that's got the point on the end here, and this is a Martha Stewart bone folder, and I just go ahead and fold those down like this. Hopefully you can see that. And then take the backing off my tape. and then fold this piece over. And then that gives you a nice, pretty little corner. This one's actually better than this one. I could have trimmed a little bit more off of there. But again, it's better to have a little too much than not enough because you can't put it back on. Okay, so we're gonna do the other side. Again, we're gonna take our bone folder and fold in those little creases and take the backing off of our tape. And stick her down. Okay, so now we have our corners all done. It's all nice and pretty. Now we want to go ahead and fold up. Now, this is another reason why maybe your paper is tearing. You don't want to fold it all the way flat. If you look at a book, it's only at a 90 degree angle. It's not like folded over to the bottom. So I like to just go ahead and put my bone folder in here or this little Teflon. This is actually a Teflon bone lifter that I purchased at scrapadabadoo.com. They are kind of pricey, I will warn you, but best tool ever. So then once you do that, gently fold it up till you reach a 90 degree angle. Don't fold it all the way over and flatten it. You don't want to do that. That will make your paper tear. Not all the time, but it can. Okay, so then flip it around. We're going to do the same thing to the back cover. And since we have a little bit of tape in there, we just can go ahead and fold that up. And there we go. That's our book cover. Okay, super cute. Now, when we put our hinge in there, like this, it's going to go ahead and cover up these gaps in between here. So what you want to do is take the backing off here, and you know what, I'm going to not stick mine down because I want to trim this a little bit. What was I thinking? Because I forgot my covers are four and a half, so I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. Okay. Because again, I like my covers to be at least a quarter of an inch bigger, and I didn't cut this that way, so it should line up just like this. And you're going to go ahead and ooh, I'll cut that really quick. Let's find a straight edge here. This one's a straight one. You're going to center this right in between 
on your spine so it covers up your spaces. And it's easy for me to just go ahead and do the bottom, and then if I get the bottom right, then I know the top's pretty much right. So you're going to go ahead and take your backing off and stick that down right like that. it with your pencil if you want and measure it and stick it down. Take your bone folder. This is why I like this tool. It's really good for burnishing your tape. And this little thing here fits right in between your gussets just like that. Okay again we need to do the same thing with our hinge. This is why I like to leave at least a double thickness between here because you have the cardstock that you've already wrapped it with and then you have the cardstock from your binding piece that needs to go in here as well so that takes up a lot of space in there. And the other side. Okay so there you go. That's your little book cover and then you can just go ahead and attach your pages. Again you'll put your score tape on both sides of your hinge just like this. One on that side, and one on that side, okay? You'll do that to all six hinges, and there you go. That's how you make your binding and how you do your covers and your spine, okay? That's my tutorial, everybody, and there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye.